Hello there, this is Mr. Ironic. I had a long journey to Mistral. I'm tired and I just got here. Now I only wait for the others to arrive because that's why they teased and implied in the last episode. Ok, jokes around, in this video I will not talk about how good or bad it's Ruby. Check my previous reviews if you want to see that. Oh, we'll break his legs! Today I wanna talk about the story construction and development patterns from volume 1 until now. And yes, there are story patterns. How is the story built and what makes you, the common viewer, want to watch more? Ruby respects a very simple formula of creating expectations. It always focuses on building the audience expectations through dialogue of moments of no story relevance except teasing, and concludes them in some form, good or bad. Mostly bad. Oh Roman, have a little faith. You'll know what you need when you need to know it. I noticed that Ruby is divided in distinct storylines based on events that work pretty similar. What I will show you comes mostly from my speculations because it would require more volumes to confirm this. So I may be wrong. What strikes me the most are the similarities between volume 1 and 4 when it comes to its construction. Both volumes are focusing on setting the ground for something, they introduce a lot of information and mostly focus on individual character development. The general story seems to me that it's dividing in three volumes long individual storylines. First three volumes, or the introduction of the show, are focusing on Beacon Academy and the typical and simplistic life of hunters and huntresses in training. From the first episode we get to know that something is happening, Tortric and his dust robberies, we know that he has a plan but we don't know what. Something is put in motion. Along the volume, or at least the episode that matter, we are teased again and again and again about the big evil scheme that will eventually happen. We are introduced to Cinder and become even more curious. They hook you up for the first volume and promise that something sometime will happen. You keep watching the show wanting to know what will happen. Sometimes the story will give you pretty obvious foreshadowing about the events that are going to proceed, but only to make you even more thirsty after the show. Like Ren and Nora's flashback. I always wanted to see a flashback of their past, and it happened now. <laughs> and now you say, but every story functions like this. Yes, and I'm not trying to say that Ruby is wrong doing so, I just wanna highlight how this type of story construction works specifically on this show. But on most of the times, a good story will give you meaningful events and exposition along the way. Ruby is only teasing you and fill the gap between events that matter with mostly things that don't. I mean, episodes 3 to 15 from volume 1 and the whole volume 2 are utterly almost crap that doesn't matter to the main storyline. Ruby is doing a great job at teasing future events to you so that you are there watching week by week and hope that the thing that you expected so long to happen will eventually happen. And it will! In about two years or so. <laughs> I always feel like an idiot for having so much expectation from this show for such a long time, and I never learn my lesson. Not even now. Let me see what happens in Mistral. It took 3 volumes for Cinder to go ahead with her plan, and now, as we can see, it will take more than a volume for our characters to get to Mistral and a big series of meaningful events to happen again. The end of volume 3 is teasing you that something will happen in Mistral at the Haven Academy, and we see Team Ranger going over there. Ok, that's the setup. Volume 4 is their route and more teasing, but now we know a little bit more about the actual event. Like, why does Salem attack the schools? We know that Adam is trying to take down the current leader of White Fang, so we're even more eager to see these events. They added extra teasing to the actual teasing. In Volume 5, they all might get there and Team Ruby reunites. And in Volume 6, the actual shit will be going down and we'll assist to another show of twisted events, bloodshed and tragic deaths as we did in Volume 3. As you can already see, the narrative construction of volumes is pretty much mirroring the previous ones. Volume 1 and Volume 4, teasing, introduction of a lot of new things, we know that something big will happen. 
volume 2, volume 5, well, volume 5 it's not out yet, but as I said, these are all my speculations. Preparation for what's coming, no actual story development and a lot of crap. Volume 3 and volume 6, the thing that we were teased in volume 1 and 4 and preparing for in volumes 2 and 5 will actually happen. I can only assume that volume 7, 8 and 9, if they will ever happen, will respect the same narrative construction. Teasing, preparation and then the expected events. Maybe exploring a new kingdom and introducing a lot of new stuff in the Rubyverse. Not to mention a time skip again. But this time, I think they can go a few years ahead. Anyway, you can see it as a short semi-speculative story pattern revealing and construction breakdown. These are all my thoughts and opinions and you're free to take them however you want. I'll be reviewing the last episode of volume 4 and after that I'll be doing a review for the whole volume. That's it for now, thanks.